always on your side. Tonight, several breaking stories as we come on. A toddler rushed to the hospital after falling into a rhino enclosure at a Florida zoo. As we hear the first 911 call from that deadly lion attack, an intern killed. Now authorities investigating both incidents. Also breaking tonight, the highway chaos. A woman pulled from her sinking vehicle after it flipped off the highway. Dense fog, blinding drivers, and causing pileups in Texas. And the new system tonight that will sweep east this week. Also tonight, President Trump inviting top Democrats to the White House. Can they end the shutdown? Hundreds of thousands of workers in limbo. Trash piling up at landmarks. Plus, the American arrested in Moscow, accused of being a spy. A former Marine who served two tours why his family says he was in Russia. The miracle rescue, a baby boy pulled from the rubble of a massive apartment collapse. And the tense standoff, an armed suspect in a police chase, an infant inside the vehicle, the moment authorities moved in. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. And good evening and thanks for joining us on this New Year's Day. I'm Tom Yamas in for David. And we begin tonight with a dangerous close encounter at a Florida zoo. A toddler injured when she fell into the enclosure at a hands-on rhino exhibit. The animal making contact with the child who was then rushed to the hospital for treatment. A photo showing a shoe left behind inside the pen. That incident coming as officials in North Carolina investigate the lion attack at a conservation center there that left an intern dead with a 911 call for help now being released. Here's ABC Stephanie Ramos. Tonight, terrifying moments as a toddler slipped into a rhino exhibit at this Florida zoo. You have a one-year-old who uh, fell into the rhino face and was pinned up against the wall. She's uh, conscious at this time. A visitor snapping this picture after the chaos, a shoe seen inside the exhibit. The Brevard Zoo says the little girl stumbled and fell through the poles during the zoo's rhino encounter, coming into contact with one rhino. The zoo calls the exhibit an educational experience. Pictures from its website show people interacting with rhinos, even touching them. It comes just days after an intern was killed by a lion, who authorities say broke through a locked enclosure at this conservation center in North Carolina. Tonight, we're seeing the first images of the enclosures as authorities release the call to 911. We've had a lion attack. 22-year-old Alex Black was killed. The sheriff's department says it all happened during a routine cleaning. The person that was attacked, how bad are they hurt? They are incapacitated. One of the responding deputies tells NBC affiliate WRAL they had to kill the lion when tranquilizers didn't work. It took several shots uh, to bring him down. Um, he was uh, amped up. He, he had been moving around the kennel or the enclosure several, several times. All right, Stephanie Ramos joins us live now. And Stephanie, I want to go back to that toddler that fell into the rhino enclosure. She's in the hospital tonight, and we're also learning her mother was injured. That's right, Tom. The child's mom was injured. She hurt her arm, but she has been released from the hospital. The little girl's father says this has been a trying day for all of them, but the little girl is doing well and is in good care. Tom. Stephanie Ramos leading us off tonight. Stephanie, thank you. We turn out of the dangerous new storm system taking shape, set to move east across the country this week on the heels of a deadly New Year's Eve with dense fog causing chaos on the roads. Florida first responders forced to hunt for a driver who lost control and then overturned into a ditch, the water rising as she called 911. And across Texas, visibility nearly zero. Look at that. With several crashes reported, including a chain reaction pileup in Austin involving more than 30 vehicles and one fatal wreck in Houston. Tonight, snow already falling in the southwest as that new storm strikes. Here's ABC's chief meteorologist, Ginger Z. Tonight, a frantic effort to rescue a driver near Tampa. Fog hampering first responders as they try to locate her vehicle. Our lights are bouncing back at us from the fog as we're trying to find this woman that is literally drowning. The woman's car careening off Interstate 4 after another driver cut her off, overturning and sinking into a ditch. It was thick, muddy, disgusting water that came up to your chest. Deputies prying open the doors, helping her get out just in time. I'm just thankful I didn't break anything, that I'm still here. And for all the police officers and the dispatch lady who helped me. Dense fog enveloping much of southeast Texas, too. 
resulting in numerous crashes, including these near Galveston. In the Houston area, families abandoning their vehicles. I have literally had to get out of the car and walk because we cannot see anything. A man killed after he failed to stop at an intersection and hit a tree. Either wasn't aware or due to the fog, didn't see that it's a T intersection. In Austin, this chain reaction crash involving more than 30 vehicles. To the west in New Mexico, semis overturning on snowy roads. That developing system now marching east. All right, let's get right to Ginger Z. And Ginger, I know you're tracking this new storm tonight. Yeah, and it's really far south. It's a true winter storm that's actually going to slide along the Mexican border. Already brought snow from Tucson to Albuquerque, and there's more where that came from. A hard freeze warning there until Thursday morning. And then freezing rain could make the commute a mess north and west of Dallas and south of I-40 in Oklahoma. On the front end of it, it's going to be the flash flood potential from Houston into Louisiana. So let's time it out. Look at tomorrow morning's commute, especially late in the commute west and northwest of Dallas. Keep that in mind because you could be slipping and sliding on the roads. Then it moves east for tomorrow night. Heavy rains, and this is after, remember, 2018 for places like Jackson, Mississippi or Atlanta, Georgia had their wettest year on record, Tom. All right, a messy return to the work week. Ginger, thanks for that. Next tonight, we turn to politics and a possible breakthrough with the government shutdown now dragging into an 11th day. President Trump has invited congressional leaders from both parties to the White House on Wednesday for a briefing on border security, still insisting on funding for a wall. At the same time, new evidence of the shutdown, trash cans overflowing in the nation's capital. And tonight, the president telling incoming House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, let's make a deal. Here's ABC White House correspondent Tara Palmieri with more. Tonight, new signs of movement in the government shutdown stalemate. President Trump inviting Democratic congressional leaders to the White House, tweeting this question to incoming House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Let's make a deal? Tomorrow's meeting, their first since this heated clash 21 days ago. I'll we disagree. What. I am proud to shut down the government for border security, Chuck. The president then pledged he wouldn't budge unless Congress gave him $5 billion to build a wall on the southern border, a wall he long promised Mexico would pay for. Who's going to pay for the wall? Now, 11 days into the shutdown, 800,000 federal employees are furloughed or working without pay. Who say good night? Their families in limbo tonight. Angela Cabana's husband, Jason, is an air traffic controller. He's the sole breadwinner, and we've got two young kids, and it's pretty scary not knowing when you're going to get paid. On the National Mall, signs of the shutdown everywhere. Garbage piling up in the shadow of the Washington Monument. Museums and the National Zoo shuttering tomorrow. Tonight, signs the White House may be looking for a way out. Thursday, Democrats officially take over the House. In his New Year's message, the president hinting at the battles to come. It's going to be a great year. Complicated, but great. Okay, a complicated year ahead. Tara Palmieri joins us now from the White House. And Tara, the president meeting tomorrow with Democratic leaders, but they've made it very clear they will not fund his border wall. Tom, with this new Congress, the Democrats gain even more leverage in the fight. The president's advisors are pushing him to offer them incentives, like a solution for dreamers, those undocumented immigrants who came to the country illegally as children. Tom? Tara Palmieri for us tonight. Tara, thank you. Overseas now, where a 48-year-old American and former Marine is in custody in Russia, accused of being a spy. His family says he's innocent and that he was there to attend a wedding, and now the State Department is involved. ABC's James Longman with the details coming in. Tonight, the family of Paul Whelan speaking out. The former Marine placed under arrest in Moscow, accused of being a spy. The only goal, the only idea we have is to get him back. David Whelan says his brother was in Russia last week for a wedding and had toured Moscow with friends the Friday he vanished. We realized that something had gone wrong. Um, and that Paul wasn't where he was supposed to be. But no one knew where he was. On Sunday, friends filed a missing persons report. Then Russian security services put out the statement yesterday saying they have initiated a criminal case against a U.S. citizen under Article 276 of the Criminal Code of the Russian Federation. Article 276, espionage. Tonight, he's being held by authorities in Russia, but his brother firmly denies the allegations. There's no chance that Paul was engaged in espionage in, in Russia. The 48-year-old heads up security for a Michigan-based auto parts company but has a checkered past in the U.S. Armed Forces. After two tours in Iraq, he was discharged for larceny. A self-professed Russophile, Whelan was active on Russian social media. 
Spy scandals have long been part of the theater of U.S.-Russia relations. This arrest comes just two weeks after the guilty plea of confessed Russian agent Maria Butina, who admitted to infiltrating Republican political circles to influence U.S.-Russia relations. No word yet from the State Department whether or not they've spoken to Whelan. The charges against him are serious, and if convicted, he could spend a minimum of 10 years in prison. Tom? James Longman for us tonight. James, thank you. And in Manchester, England, authorities say a New Year's Eve stabbing attack was an act of terror. Three people, including a police officer, were wounded when the unidentified 25-year-old suspect attacked at the city's Victoria train station just a short walk from the Manchester Arena where 22 people were killed at that Ariana Grande concert in 2017. The injuries are considered serious but not life-threatening. And in Germany, a man arrested after allegedly driving into crowds shortly after midnight on purpose. At least five people were injured in the western cities of Bartrop and Essen, where the 50-year-old driver began ramming pedestrians with a silver Mercedes, apparently targeting foreigners with Syrian and Afghan citizens among the victims. Back here at home, and the 2020 presidential race jump-started. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren already announcing she's in, but she's not alone. Here's ABC's David Wright. As she announces her first big campaign swing through Iowa, Senator Elizabeth Warren is trying to showcase how relatable she is. Hold on a sec. I'm going to get me um, a beer. Cracking um, a cold one on this New Year's live stream with supporters, the video also featured her husband. Hello. This is my sweetie. Hello. And their eight-month-old puppy. Hours earlier, Warren announced her intentions on Facebook. America's middle class is under attack. President Trump says he's not impressed. I'd love to run against her. She says she's in the fight all the way, Mr. President. Do you, do you really think she believes she can win? Well, that I don't know. You'd have to ask her psychiatrist. There's a growing list of possible Democratic hopefuls. Former Vice President Joe Biden said this week he'll make up his mind in the next two months. Senators Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, and Kirsten Gillibrand are already reportedly staffing up. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders hasn't ruled out running himself. And the big wild card? Outgoing Congressman Beto O'Rourke. Will he get into the race? Over New Year's, O'Rourke tweeted out this picture, building an igloo with his wife and kids. And David Wright joins us now. David, Senator Warren making it official, and this weekend she's heading to Iowa? That's right, Tom. She has four big campaign events planned across the state, really trying to take advantage of this moment when she's the biggest named challenger to declare her intentions. Tom? David Wright for us. David, thank you. And 2019 ushers in a slate of new laws across the country. 20 states and nearly two dozen cities will increase their minimum wage this year, with about 17 million Americans from New York to California set to receive pay bumps. In Ohio, a new law will require students to write legibly in cursive by the fifth grade. And in California, pet stores can now only sell dogs, cats and rabbits that have come from a public shelter or a rescue group. Next tonight, who wouldn't want to start 2019 $425 million richer? That's a jackpot up for grabs in the New Year's Day Mega Millions drawing, the eighth largest in the game's history. As ABC's Kana Whitworth reports, customers are lining up. Tonight, ringing in the new year with your shot to become the What's next America? big millionaire. It's Mega Millions. The Mega Millions jackpot soaring to $425 million. The prize ballooning as hopeful millionaires run out to buy tickets. This is the winner for tonight. <laughs> yeah. But don't count your coin just yet. Odds of winning the jackpot are 1 in 302.5 million. If you do win, you could pocket a cool $254 million if you take the cash option, enough to pay for 20 yachts like this one, owned by Tiger Woods. It's been an unprecedented year for Mega Millions, including the record prize of $1.5 billion in October. And that jackpot still hasn't been claimed. And Tom, tonight's drawing will be just the fifth time in history a Mega Millions jackpot has been drawn on New Year's Day. Tom. Kana Whitworth first. Kana, thank you. And there's still much more ahead of world news tonight. Guns drawn, the tense standoff between police and an armed suspect, all caught on camera. A child in that vehicle, how the showdown ended. Plus, the Rose Bowl float on fire right in the middle of the parade. What happened? And inside a miracle rescue at an apartment collapse, a baby boy pulled.